Hello, dear friends, and welcome to our next episode of Storytime. Today, we are going to read a tale from another faraway land of Tajikistan. It is indeed a distant land, the land of deserts and mountains, and beautiful lakes with a long ancient history filled with war and revolution and upheaval and an occasional earthquake. Sadly today, Tajikistan is still a very conservative country and a poor country that is still struggling to achieve its own character independent of its very oppressive government. Nonetheless, uh, its rich culture and history are not to be discounted and definitely worth looking into. So this story is definitely one of their older stories um, and in a way it resonates today because it speaks of the independence of a woman. Traditionally, Tajikistan is a very patriarchal society, which means it is largely dominated by men. And as of just 10 years ago, a vast majority, 7 out of 10 women in Tajikistan still lived in traditional villages. Women are generally controlled and frequently oppressed. Um, not necessarily encouraged to get an education and lead the lives of, lives of their own. So this old story, the story of a smart woman, it's really unique in that way because it speaks of a woman who walks away from a wealthy but unhappy life to build a life entirely her own. So here it is. A Tajik folk tale, a smart woman. Once upon a time, in one city, there lived a wealthy merchant. Every day after breakfast, he stretched out on a sofa atop seven blankets, summoned his wife, and started boasting. Hey wife, under the shadow of my great mind and boundless wealth, you're drowning in happiness and well-being. Thanks to my high rank, and great influence, you, a simple and formerly poor girl, enjoy the respect of all the women in the city. Thanks to my riches, you are well fed and well dressed. You must thank God a thousand times that your husband is such a smart man. The merchant's wife rose before dawn every day, fed the livestock, milked the cows, swept the yard, cleaned the house, and prepared food. Every evening she cooked very, various delicacies for her husband and his insatiable guests. The merchant gave her no helpers around his large estate and she took care of everything alone without a single complaint. She even found time to embroider skull caps. Neighbors sold them at high cost and gave the money to the merchant. When I was a little girl, I have to interrupt here, uh, my dad was a pilot and he has been to Tajikistan and brought me a traditional skull cap as a present and I will show you a picture here. They really are very beautiful and take a lot of skill. So this smart lady could do everything and embroider skull caps when she could find the time. Once, when the merchant once again started praising himself and reproaching his wife, she couldn't stand it and said, At first, I thought I was fed and clothed only thanks to you, but soon I became convinced I'd contributed a fair share of work toward the increase of your wealth, and you should not reproach me. This was the first time the merchant heard the bitter truth from his wife. He instantly lost his temper, jumped up, and shouted angrily, 
Hey, you! Long hair, short wits. How dare you say such things to me? Without me, you would have been destitute. Without me, you would have died, drowning in mud. Get out, and never let me see you again. But this time, her husband's threats and censure did not frighten the poor woman. She looked at the fat, beet-red face with disgust, and said, Very well, you shall never see me again. But do not worry, I shall not become destitute or starve to death. On the contrary, even if I become a wife of the poorest man in the city, I will not be a burden to him. Having gathered her very meager possessions into a bundle, the woman left the merchant's house. At the outskirts of the city, the woman started asking who the poorest and loneliest man in the neighborhood was. She was pointed toward the half-beggar Sahid, who earned his daily bread by selling dry grass he gathered. In his entire life, he had never eaten anything but stale bread and flour gruel, and had no clothing but a dirty threadbare shirt with a thousand patches. When she came to Sahid's house, the woman saw the wicket was broken and hung open. The yard was dirty. It had never been swept. When she walked into the ramshackle hut, she saw an old torn blanket on the floor and a greasy pillow as hard as wood from all the dirt. Sahid's old cooking pot had a broken rim. The cast iron tea kettle was black from soot, and next to them was a pumpkin basin. The woman brought some water from a creek, sprinkled around, and swept the yard and in the house. She cut the cover off the blanket, took the case off the pillow, and washed them both. After cleaning up, she pulled sewing from her bundle and sat down to embroider a skullcap. Finally, Sahid came home. With two sheaves of dry grass piled on his back, he walked with his head hanging low. Dropping the grass in the corner of the yard, he noticed it's been swept, and there was laundry hanging outside to dry. Surprised, Zahid looked into the house and saw a woman leaning over some embroidery. Even more surprised, he said, I must be mistaken. This is not my house. Seeing he was about to leave, the woman rose and said, You are not mistaken. This is indeed your house. Sahid could not believe what he was seeing with his own eyes and hearing with his own ears. The poor man couldn't dream of bringing a wife to his house, for no one would let him marry their daughter. And so, the sight of a woman at his house left him completely dumbstruck. The woman continued, If you do not mind, I shall stay here and keep house for you. Sahid was so happy, his knees buckled, and he almost fainted as he said, of course. The beautiful and, as Sahid found, smart woman immediately started asking about his life. Every day early in the morning, I go out into the field to gather dry grass, Sahid told her. Once I gather two sheaves, I take them to the market to sell. With this little bit of money, I buy bread or flour to make the gruel. After I eat, I sleep until the following day. Just to clarify, uh, people in Tajikistan use uh, clay ovens to bake, and so dry grass is used to fuel them. And of course, it's something very easy uh, to pick. You know, grass is everywhere, so you just go out and pick it. But out in the hot sun, it is still very hard work. In that case, said the woman, take your grass to the market as usual but use only half of the money to buy flour and bring the other half home. Sahid wanted to say flour bought with so little money from selling the grass would not be enough for two, but stopped himself and thought, this woman clearly knows what she's doing. Let's see what happens next. He picked up the grass and went off to the market while the woman returned to embroidering a skullcap. In the evening, Sahid returned and handed the flour and half of the money to the woman. She rose, made gruel, and the two of them had supper. Afterward, the woman said to Sahid, Please mix some clay with water, fix the broken spots on the roof and along the fence, and then smooth over them with more clay and fine sand. Sahid, 
who was accustomed to being sound asleep this time of day, reluctantly went to mix clay and fix the room and the fence. The woman continued with her sewing. The following day, the woman asked Zahid to gather not two but four sheaves of grass and take them to the market right away. While at the market, she said, handing a brand new skull cap to Zahid, sell this as well. Bring half of the money you make home and use the other half to buy a little flour, butter, onions, radishes, and two clay bowls. Zahid returned home, having done everything the new lady of the house had asked. As soon as he was back, the woman set aside her sewing, stoked the fire, quickly baked a flatbread, and made vegetable soup. Having poured the soup into the new bowls, she set them onto the clean tablecloth. Zahid ate the soup with the hot, soft flatbread and said, Oh, what a tasty soup! And what sweet flatbread! I wish I could eat like that every day. They say, hard work brings joy, said the woman. If you and I continue to work hard, we won't only eat the vegetable soup and the thin flatbread, but also meat soup and butter bread for tea. If that is so, said Sahid happily, tell me what to do next. It's still early, said the woman. Could you possibly pick two more sheaves of grass by evening? Sahid quickly found rope and his small axe and went off to pick grass. Sahid's zeal increased every day, and he began noticing his life with such a wife was becoming better and better. Once, before Sahid went off to work, his wife handed him the money they'd been setting aside and said, Buy us a new cooking pot and fabric for a new blanket. Sahid started spending all his free time to improve their home. With the help of his wife and following her wishes, he surrounded his house with a new fence, added new gates, rebuilt the house, and planted a variety of trees in the yard. Once, the wife said to Sahid, I'd like you to invite some guests. She named a few wealthy people from the city, including her former husband. Sahid carried out all of his smart wife's instructions and went to invite the guests. Meanwhile, the wife called a few neighbors to help and prepared a number of delicious dishes. The guests gathered and settled down around the table. In the midst of a plentiful feast, one of the guests asked Sahid, We all know, Sahid, you used to be the poorest man in the city. Then we learned your life had improved, and now we can see for ourselves how well you live. Tell us, how did you manage to improve your life? Only thanks to my smart wife, Sahid said honest, honestly. All the guests were surprised by Sahid's answer and would not believe him. But the woman's former husband said, I'm not at all surprised and can believe Sahid, because I know as much for myself. I had a very kind, hard-working wife, and I did not appreciate her. Only after she left me did I discover the value of such a woman. He told them that no matter how many workers he'd hired after his wife's departure, his life grew worse and worse. He no longer found the same joy in life as he had with his wife. Absorbed in the memories of his former wife, he regretted his actions and the bitter words he once said to her. From his disheveled appearance, those present could believe his life was not at all the same. Suddenly, his gaze fell upon the doorway, where he saw a woman who looked like his wife, standing there and smiling quietly. Just then, another guest asked Sahid, Where did you find such a smart wife? She came to me herself, Sahid said solemnly and joyously. The merchant no longer had to guess his former smart and hard-working wife who knew how to do anything, became Sahid's wife, and thus proved that she was right. So this was the story of a smart woman from Tajikistan. I hope you enjoyed it. Would love for you to comment. Thank you again for watching, and I'm hoping to see you again soon.